Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. Hey guys, how you going? Welcome back to our channel. Today is going to be part one of two for our tow car video. As you'll see, we've done a whole lot of the stuff ourselves. Partially it's budgetary and also it gives me something to do on weekends. So, yeah. As always, if you like what you see, let us know. If you have any questions um, about why we chose certain things, let us know. Hope you like it. Alright guys, so we're back. Um, this is a uh, second take of all this because last time wind and I've got some rhino rack rails that I've welded on the roof as well. Um, so yeah, here we go. Let's go through the car. So, yep, Ford Ranger, I know, all the haters are going to hate, 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 hate. But, it's a good car, I like it. It was great price when I bought it. They had a deal for ABN holders, so I got it at a good rate. Um, I got the XLS, so this is 2017, end of 2017, 2018 plated. And it had the highest weight carrying capacity of the range that they had at the time. So yeah, I'll take you through it. All right, so starting up the front, we have our little mascot here, Eeyore, um, just because we can, so that's him. And then across the front here, this MCC bull bar, it's a stainless steel tri-loop. Um, got that pretty good price off eBay, fitted that. My little brother and my best mate are both mechanics, so they've helped me out with fitting out few bits on the car and that which has helped us save money on fittings, fitters fees and stuff like that um, so yeah quite happy with the bull bar you can't really see well I'm a short ass so I can't see the bars when I'm driving part of the reason of having the mascot and antenna um, but I have made some packers for these to lift this up a bit um, I don't know if you can see that, but down in here, it bolts up into this tube. So I've made packers to suit. Oh, I just haven't put them in because time and effort and don't want to at the moment. Now I'm up here, IPF headlights. These have HID kits in them. So I've got a mate who had these two plus another two on an old BT50. And yeah, he um, when he was selling it, he asked me if I could give him a hand pulling all his lights off and winches out and radio and a whole bunch of other extras that he had done to the car, air compressor and the likes. And um, at the end of all of it, he said, you can have those. So I fitted them to this and um, yeah, they work really great. I don't do much driving at night. The uh, little man that we got, two years old, so by the time it gets dark, it's bedtime for him, so we don't really do too much night driving. Um, but yeah, when we do, really happy with them, so yeah. Um, right here, Iron Man 9,000 pound winch. So it's a little bit older. This came on, I used to have a Nissan Navara, a D22, and this came with it. And when I sold it, I took the winch off and fitted it to this and Anyway, long story short, I actually end up doing, using this a lot less four-wheel driving. Um, I've used it more pulling out excavators and bobcats on properties around my place and that than I have actually used it four-wheel driving or getting myself or other mates' cars out or anything. Um, considered pulling it out, but it's a pain in the ass anyway. So for the moment, it's staying. All right, so we also have here, as you can see, this is Snorkel, it's a Dobinson's. I picked this up off eBay, pretty cheap. Fit it myself. You know, a bit scary taking a big 108 mil hull saw to the side panel, but you know, mark it all out, measure it all out, measure from 50 times, 60 times before I blew the big hole in it. And it still wasn't 100% right, but 
managed to you know use a die grinder and cut the hole out a little bit more and get it shaped right and fit it so yeah did that and um we'll have a look under the bonnet all right so this is under the bonnet nothing flash just a standard 3.2 litre five cylinder engine um a couple little mods so i got this is a catch can, oil catch can, separates the oil that's in the air pressure, top of the crank there, separates it out before it goes back through to the intake system so you don't fill all that up with wet goop. Um, try to keep the inject in intake side of the car really clean. So that's the idea of that guy. Um, that guy there just plums down to a drain hose that I have just here, as you can see, and um, I just take the cap off, turn that tap, drain it into a bucket, get rid of the excess oil, and yeah, I'm gonna do that probably every two or 3,000 Ks. Um, not that it gets heaps, but I don't want it to fill up and defeat the purpose of having catch can in the first place. Uh, under here too, a few of you will notice, so I've upgraded the pipes, so, these have a tendency to split. Um, the stock ones do anyway. Heaps and heaps of people have had dramas with them. So I did a bit of research. I got some silicon ones. And as I was doing that, and both sides of that, well, the side's like way down there, goes off here, straight down. Um, I upgraded the intercooler, which is under here. I'm not gonna pull it out and show you, but it is just a, a wider, bigger core intercooler. So just better airflow. Um, doesn't get restricted going through the intercooler. And then, not much else up here. That's a breather for the winch. Um, there's a fuse for the HID kit for that set of spotties. And you can't really see too much else. I've taken off a kind of big power take off there. That runs in. I don't think you can see down in there, but it runs down in through there at Gromit into the inside of the car sort of up behind the glove box up in that area yes that power cable runs up under the glove box there and i've got two sections that break out off that one is unswitched and the other is switched off the accessories so my uhf for example is unswitched that lets me run the uhf even if the car's not on um because sometimes i just prefer to be able to have the radio on, don't want the whole car on or anything like that. Um, the things that are switched are things like my dash cam and bits and pieces, I'll show you all that in a minute. But yeah, so that's really all the power mods that are done inside the car. I haven't gone hectic on it, so. All right, so passenger side of the car here. Woohoo, yay. Um, not much to tell really. It's a normal car, weather shields, because sometimes I like windows down. Um, I have upgraded the fuel tank. It's a um, Brown Davis 145 litre diesel tank. And yeah, it just made travelling distances a whole lot easier, you know, like the, the old tank only being about 80 litre tank, but you really only get 70 litres in it or so, not even that, because try and keep a little bit in there all the time so don't disturb everything right in the bottom all the time. And um, yeah, it just meant that we were stopping all the time. Now with this, I'm getting like 900 odd Ks towing the caravan. I get probably 11, between 11 and 1400 Ks sort of thing around town, depending on what I'm carrying for work and all that sort of garbage. Um, so heaps better. I think since lockdown started, so we're near oh, like week 13, 14 or something of being in lockdown, I haven't put fuel in it yet. So yeah, it's been pretty good. Okay, so one of the other things we've had done to the car, and it was only recently, as you can see, Tough Dog sticker. I used to have Tough Dog suspension. Really liked it. Couldn't fault it. I mean, the back sat a little bit high, but yeah, really, really good. I didn't go with adjustable shocks or any of that sort of stuff. I just got stock, you know, their big bore shocks or whatever they call them. Um, still really, really liked them, but I couldn't get a GVM certification done. I tried for ages trying to find people to do it. No one to do it. So recently I had Petters, Petters Hornsby do this. Um, 
Now, I got them to do it. They did it really, really quick. It was about three weeks from when I called them to when it was all engineered and good to go. And that was so, it was all done before we went on our big trip. And I picked it up that day, went home, started packing stuff back into the car and all that. And um, the next day, boom, lockdown. So anyway, I've got it done now, it's good. I got it done, two reasons, mostly because for work. So when we travel, I can put stuff in the car, me, George, the wife, and some of our gear and all that. I've got a fridge in there and all that, we'll go through that later, but I can put all that in the car and put the caravan on and I'm about 50 to 100 kilos under the GVM of the car. When I do stuff for work, I load all my work tools up, if I pick up one or two of the boys, take them with me onto site or um, just some of the stuff that I carry for work is really heavy. So I was borderline anyway being on the GVM weight with all my tools and just me in the car. I'll pick up someone else and I was pretty much bang on my JVM, which means I couldn't really take anything else. So I got it for that. And then in turn, that's helped me for traveling because that means I can just, you know, throw a bit more stuff in the car. I don't have to think about it, I don't have to worry. I can throw extra firewood in the tray, anything like that. So yeah, um, I'll show you a couple of pics from underneath, but yeah, really happy with the, the Petters GVM upgrade. The car sits pretty flat. I'll do a side shot for you in a sec. Um, the back end's a lot lower than it was with the, the Tough Dog, which I'm actually happier with because it makes it easier to reach in and get stuff because there's nothing like having having the, the top of the tray up near the bottom of your tits and trying to reach in. So as some of you know, if you've got these, um, even from standard, they've got like this bad vibration when you take off and slowing down and um, as soon as you lift them anymore it just gets worse and worse it's probably enough to rattle the fillings out of your teeth um, I had heaps of dramas with this when I first bought it before I had the tough dog in it and everything and I took it to Ford and they came back with it's a characteristic of the vehicle so then I went to a drive shaft specialist and we had the original shaft all rebalanced and rephased properly and then cast the correctors and pack the center bearing in the right way and all this and couldn't get rid of that vibration anyway i ended up talking to a mob up at newcastle gibson's drive shafts um, they were really really helpful they sorted me out with one of their custom single piece that they do for these and i fitted it in the driveway at home took me no time and makes a world of difference. Like I can have this thing fully loaded, no load, and don't get one vibration at all. Okay, so looking inside the car, nothing too flash. Um, it's got canvas seat covers, waterproof canvas seat covers on both the seats. And on the back seat as well, canvas seat covers. Uh, there's the master control seat. That's where the big boss sits. And then the second boss actually sits there. Those two really just not make all the decisions. I just pilot the ship. Um, <clears throat> floor mats, I've got these 3D molded floor mats on eBay. They've been really, really good. They come pretty much shaped to the, the, the right shape for the car. As you see, they've been well used, but really, really good. Would recommend any day of the week after you've got my old man set for his. All right, so this is about my eye level. That's what you see from the driver. Well, probably back a little bit because I can see that, turn my head and whatnot. But as you see, you can't see the, the bull bar really from there. If we go up a bit higher, so probably is the fact that I'm a short ass, but anyway, I'll uh, try and correct that with some packers under the bar, get it up a bit higher. All right, going through what's in the car. So I've got a quad lock mount for my phone. That kind of goes on here and uh, locks in. Obviously, you can't see it because I'm filming with my phone, so, oh well. Um, all right, USB outlets. Oh, look, a mask, COVID. <laughs> um, all right, up here, I've got a dash cam. I've hardwired that, as I said before. So up under there, I've got um, some power that gets switched off the accessories. That turns that on straight away. 
So with the old dash cam, I would highly recommend that if you don't have one, get one fitted to your car. Um, if you're not confident doing it yourself, get someone else to do it. But saved me my very first trip with our first van. So I bought a van. If you go back a few videos, talk about it, but I spent like three and a half months and gutted the whole thing, rebuilt the whole entire thing. We're going on its maiden voyage, driving out probably 15, 20 minutes from home, heaps and heaps of traffic, and someone tried to come in from a side street and fit in between me and the van I was towing. And um, then I get a claim from their insurance company, and I was like, hang on a minute. Like, they came out of the side street, and they said, well, if you can't prove it, then you're at fault. Well, I don't know how that works. Anyway, I pulled the footage off the camera, sent them that, and then I got an email back a couple of days later saying, oh, we reviewed your footage, and we don't have to pay anything. So... Yeah, definitely get a dash cam. Definitely, definitely worth it. Okay, so in here, we talked about the dash cam. I've replaced the rear mirror. I bought one of these. It's got a screen that pops up on this side. I'll show you that in a sec. Um, that goes to that rear view camera I showed you earlier. And that also displays the video feed from the caravan when the caravan's connected through. Um, GME UHF 80 channel, just made a bracket, mounted off where that clip is, follows that roof line. It's got a retractor thing, holds the cable up out the way. And better than having it kick around here or you know, up against legs and stuff, so. All right, so that's the rear view camera view that comes up there when the car is on. My dash cam, that powers up as well, so that's running now. Got the car on. I've just hidden it there because I don't need to see out the front from that camera, I've got a pretty good view from where I sit. Um, this I can turn off, press the button, I can check out the kids in the back and all that jazz. So yeah, that's that. And yeah, and I'll just show you too, this is what the picture from the reverse camera puts out. So it's nice and clear, good view. When the tow bar's in there, can see everything. Um, yeah, really good. Hey guys, that was part one of our video. Part two is coming up soon. Um, unfortunately, we did have some plans for some trip videos, but Sydney, New South Wales, lockdown. Yeah. Um, obviously, where the wild butlers are. Oh, where the wild butlers are. Um, we used to have a bed and sleep in the back. Then Mrs. fell pregnant and. Oh, still recording. You're all right. <laughs>